Consider the following specification. Write a program that asks the user to enter their age. If they are old enough to vote, the program asks them to collect their polling card. However, if they are not old enough to vote, the program tells them they are too young to vote. We now need to decide what the solution is, and I'm going to represent the solution using a nasty Snyderman chart. Here's the first step, obtain the user's age. So we need to consider how we would do that in the code, but that's definitely the first step. We've got to get the user's age. Now we choose a selection construct, because the selection construct will allow us to choose two routes of the program, one where we tell them to collect their polling card, and the other we tell them they're too young to vote. So here you can see we've got the Nasi Schneiderman shape for the if-else selection construct. Now when this question is asked here, old enough, well it's either true they are old enough, in which case we tell them to collect their polling card, or false, they're not old enough, in which case we say you are too young to vote. We get the program to display that. Once the steps of the program are sorted, we need to consider the variables that the program needs in order to function. Well, we can see that I've produced here a data table, and I've got a variable called age. And for this particular program, there's only going to be one variable used. And the type of this variable is going to be a number type, and it's going to be an integer, because I'm going to be entering people's years of age. I'm not going to be entering any fractions to represent how many months and so on. So if somebody's going to be 17, 18, 19, 30, whatever it may be, we enter at the first step of our program. And over here you can see I've got a comment. And the comment is just saying where I'm going to be using the variable. And it's used to store user input, which we obtain at this step, and it's also going to be used in the if then else selection construct, and it's used in this position here, where we ask old enough, and we have to decide how it's used in that position. What do we do? Well, we're going to say that you are old enough to vote when you are 18. So we have to make a decision as to what goes here to represent this question old enough. So we can see our program has a variable called age, which I'm representing here with a rectangular box. And what we need to do is ask, well, what is this question going to be here? Well, I've got age, and somehow I've got to compare this to 18. So in this position, I have to choose a relational operator. Now, earlier in the playlist, you saw the relational operator less than. Now, in this particular case, as a first attempt, I'm going to put in this particular position the following, age greater than 18, and see if this works well. When it's 17, we're asking is 17 greater than 18. That's essentially what happens when I enter 17 at this step. And clearly, that's false. So, if it's false, we display this you are too young to vote which is obviously correct so it appears to work there now let's try 18 so we enter 18 at this step and we're asking now is 18 greater than 18 which is false which means we would enter this step you are too young to vote but we've already said that you can vote when you're 18 so obviously having the greater than symbol here is not the correct solution we therefore need to devise a test plan and we're going to devise the test plant against this here, age greater than or equal to 18, because this is the correct answer. Earlier we had age greater than 18, and we saw that it didn't work. Now, for these type of conditional tests, we need to consider what are called boundary conditions. And here you can see I've drawn a number line, and onto that line I have drawn 17, 18, and 19. Now, the boundary for the test, age greater than equal to 18 is 18 itself. So what we need to realize as programmers, we need to enter something less than 18, i.e. 17, 18 itself, as well as something bigger than 18, which is 19. So by looking at the boundary, going below, going at the boundary, and going above the boundary, allows us to devise a sensible test plan. So it's important we now produce the test plan, as you can see here. I've produced a table, and if we look at the table, we can see that there are four columns. We decide what the input is, 
we put here what we expect the output to be and when the program is then run we write in this column what the actual output is and then we decide whether the program has passed or fail each individual test so if we start here we can see that when we enter 17 we expect the program to put out you are too young to vote when we enter 18 we expect the program to say collect your polling card and when we enter 19 we expect the program to again say collect your polling card and we can see that these inputs related to this number line that I produced here and we analyze the boundary around the number 18 because we were asking whether age was greater than or equal to 18. Now the Nasi Schneiderman chart this is the algorithm this is the solution to the specification and here we can see the Python code which has been derived from the NS chart. This first line of the NS chart well this is shown in the code here and this particular line is responsible for outputting the string please enter your age when the program runs and the user will enter an appropriate age which is converted to an integer and that is then stored in the variable age. This area of the NS chart well this represents the if else selection construct and we can see in the program that that is this particular area here these four lines. If we refer to the NS chart now we can see we have this question old enough. Now in Python it's this here age greater than or equal to 18 that's how we ask the question old enough of course if they are old enough then it's true in which case this step as shown in the NS chart is executed and that corresponds to this line in the program print collect your polling card of course their age may not be greater than or equal to 18 in which case that's false and this step in the NS chart will be executed and of course the corresponding line of code in the program for this step is shown here print you are too young to vote so we now can see the relationship between the algorithm as represented by the NS chart and the actual program that's implemented from the algorithm we have produced let's now test the program against the test plan here you can see the program is in view and I'm going to run it and this will appear and we can see here it says please enter your age now that string appeared here because of this line of code and we can see in brackets it says please enter your age now the test plan asked us to enter 17 18 and 19 so the first thing I'm going to do is enter the 17 as you can see here now when I press enter on the keyboard what will happen is the variable age will have 17 stored in it then what we will do we will go on to this bit of the code here age greater than or equal to 18 now we're asking is 17 greater than or equal to 18 well it's not greater than and it's not equal to 18 so this test here will produce false now because this is the selection construct and this is false this is the line of code that will execute here and it will print out you are too young to vote as you can see here in the code and then of course there are no more lines of code in this particular program so we see these three chevrons appearing telling us the program is actually executed so we can see in this particular case this was the line that was executed because this test was false and this line was not executed that's what an if else selection construct gives us a choice between two paths and because this was false we executed this one we now need to test the program against the next entry in the test plan and that's when as a user we enter 18 here you can see the program running and it's asking us to please enter our age so what we're going to do on this occasion we're going to enter 18 as you can see here now this will result in the variable age storing 18 so we will now come here and we ask this question is age greater than or equal to 18 well age is storing 18 and 18 is not greater than 18 but age is equal to 18 consequently this is true now because this is true this line of code is executed and the result of this line executing is this here where it says collect your polling card what now happens 
is this is not executed because remember with the selection construct we either execute this one or this so now the program will end it is if the program has come to this point and of course that will result in these three chevrons appearing which indicates the end of the execution of the program we now need to test the program against the next entry in the test plan and we're going to enter 19 when I run the program again well here we can see the program and here you can see that I'm entering 19 the result of this is that the age variable of the program will store 19 as we can see here now we'll come to this test is age greater than or equal to 18 well this is really asking is 19 greater than or equal to 18 well 19 is greater than 18 but it's not equal to but the fact that it's greater than 18 means that this is true now because this is true this is the line of code that is execute where it says print collect your polling card and consequently the output of the program is as shown here collect your polling card and then of course we don't execute this because that's only executed when the test is false the program ends as we see by these chevrons here so we've now tested our program against 17 18 and 19 check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python